Today we're making tomati bredi, a dish invented in Maas Kentland, more precisely in Cape Town. Here we have the goodies. Meat. Traditionally we use mutton, official word for an old sheep. But use whatever tickles you fancy. Here we have a leg of lamb. For comfort's sake I'll use boneless. Simply take a knife and follow along the bone to remove the meat. Keep the bones as they go into the bready to add flavor. We want to trim off most of the excess fat and either chuck it or freeze it. Cut the bones at the joint so they fit into your cooking vessel. I like cutting the meat into chunks like this but cut it bigger if you want by all means. I cut it smaller so the meat has more surface to caramelize which means more flavor. Also because I like the bready or stew whatever you want to call it to be fairly distributed. I mean, have you ever seen grown men fight over meat? It often gets quite intense. So be as fair as possible. Moving along, we have some chopped onions. Nothing fancy here. Chop it like you chop any onion. No need to be precise here. They will cook down to nothing anyhow. Next up, we have garlic. Give it the proper treatment by smashing it to bits, removing the skin, chopping it finely and sensually. <laughs> then pressing, salting and mincing into a roughish paste like so. A pile of tomato paste from a tin Peeled and chopped tomatoes or tomato passata, also from a tin. Potatoes. You can use medium ones like this or you can use whole baby teddies. Up to you. Potatoes, potatoes, same same. Choose your chili wisely or leave it out if you're sensitive. Allspice berries. A few cloves goes a long way. A good helping of black or white peppercorns. Bay leaves, fresh or dry, but a must. Dried chili flakes or some chili powder. A bit of whole cinnamon, coriander seeds, salt and finally sugar. Toast the spices in a dry pan over medium heat. Make sure to move them around constantly until they have a good roasty toasty aroma. We toast the spices because they taste better for it. Next we want to put it into a little bag or wrap it in a muslin cloth. If you don't have either, then blend the spices in a spice grinder or eat around them. But in they must. I find little filter bags like these quite handy. Double them up though to avoid tears. Heat the pan or casserole dish on medium high and add a touch of neutral oil. Get the meat in there, whichever size you chose, and brown it well all over. Do not let it sit and stew in its own juices and don't let it burn. If you've done it right, it'll be nicely browned and you'll have a nice bit of pond on the bottom of the pan. If you burn the bottom of the pan like I see many gurus on here do, then rather wash out the pan before continuing. It's to avoid tears later on. <laughs> in goes the onion, garlic, rim destroyer and all important bay leaves. Cook this on low heat, scraping the fond of the bottom. Raise the temperature to medium and add a touch of water if the bottom starts to caramelize. Once the onions are brown, add the salt and deglaze one more time. In goes the tomato or tomato paste. Cook this out well to get rid of the raw tomato paste flavor. In goes the meat, the chopped tomatoes or tomato passata. And obviously, if you got the bones, then get them into the pot too. In goes the sugar, top it up with water or stock and pop the bag of spices in there too. Give it all a good stir through. Bring it all to a gentle boil or simmer if you like. Cook on low heat, lid on. Check up on it every 20 minutes or so and top up with water or stock as needed. After about an hour, things should look pretty good already, but the meat will still be a bit tough. So lid on and keep cooking. Your meat is done when it breaks apart without a ton of effort. Now and only now is the time we add potatoes. Top up with liquid and lid on. They'll take about 20 minutes to cook, which is a great time to cook some rice. Something everyone knows how to cook until they have to do it. One part rice, in this case 200 grams or one cup basmati rice, gets washed in a few changes of water until it runs clear. Into a pot it goes with 300 milliliters of water, a few more bay leaves, 3 grams or half a teaspoon of salt and the knob, 1 tablespoon or 25 grams of butter. Bring to the boil then turn the temperature down to minimum. Tightly cover with a lid. I like sticking a paper towel in there too to seal it off nicely. Very important, you set a timer. 15 minutes is what you want. After 15 minutes, you remove the pan from the heat. Don't remove the lid yet. Set another timer, this time 3 minutes, and let the rice rest. And voila! You have yourself the fluffiest rice of all time. Back to our bready, which I have to say looks mighty fine and delicious. By now, our potatoes should be done. The meat fully soft and melt in the mouth, and the whole thing just calling to be eaten. So, into the mouth hole it goes. Controversially, in Maas Kentland, we serve this with rice. Because rice flays an artapult puppy. Woo! Maas Kent, my lager now! You strike me as the kind of good person that loves watching a pale guy cook delicious Cape Malay food. Which is exactly why you need to go and watch this Buboti video right here, right now, to see how it's done. And until next time, thanks for watching, love you long time, bye bye.